Hey there, you're watching On The Mark with Mark. I'm Mark. Today I wanna to show you what I did in my shed out behind my hobby garage. I put my air compressor in the building, but I did some neat things with the electrical for how I turn it on and off because I didn't wanna to have to run out to the building to turn the thing on and off. So this might be kind of fun. Here's the building. That's the shed. I like to call the shed the compressor house, but it doesn't seem to be sticking with me. But anyway, that's kind of what it is now. So let's open this up and see uh, what we got going here. Here's the compressor. And since this is such a small building, I was concerned about the heat. So I added this vent on the side of the building. And then there's also a fan on the ceiling there, an exhaust fan. The fan allows for air to be moving through here to keep the air compressor cool on the hot summer days. Now, what I've done here is I've added this electric valve on the side of the compressor. And what this does is it's got a ball valve in it and when the compressor's off, there's a capacitor in here that keeps enough electricity in it to actuate the motor that closes this valve. So whenever I pump up air, at the end of the day, I shut this thing off, it seals off right here. Here's another angle of the PVC that also carries the electricity from the garage into this shed. And there's, you see three wires there. One of them is the 220 volts for the air compressor. One of the legs is uh, switched power and another one is uh, continuous power. So the continuous power runs a light bulb that's out here in the shed that wasn't here when we moved in. And I also put one outlet out here so that I can start my snow blower. And then this outlet that you're seeing right there is switched on the same switch that controls the air compressor. So that turns on and off with the air compressor and that's what operates that little valve there. Also on that same switch that fan is on. So that fan doesn't have power to it unless the air compressor is running. And then the fan also has a thermostat and a humidistat control on it so if it only comes on when it's hot so if i'm doing something in the winter time and it's plenty cool out here it doesn't come on but if it's 90 degrees in the middle of summer then that's when it'll come on i've got it set in fact right at 90 degrees and it's probably not exact but it's close enough it comes on and it really moves a lot of air i've come out here to open the shed door before when it's running and you really got to pull on that door Also, you can see where I ran the power for that valve underneath the bracket for the motor, and then it comes out over there and plugs in right there. All very neat. We go out of the shed there. Here's a three inch PVC coming out of the shed. It goes underground right across here and then goes into the garage right there. We're in the garage now. Here's where we come in. And there you can see the hose with the compressed air going to my pneumatic system. And there is the electrical, which goes up and runs alongside the, along the ceiling there. I go to this panel. And here's the control for the air compressor. I added a 110 volt neon light on top of it so that I could tell if I left the compressor on because when the compressor shuts off and the power's on, you don't know it's still running. So now it's interesting when I turn this on. There, now we've got full air and you can still hear the compressor from here in the garage. It did not come on. And there is my, I call that a pilot light 
so that at the end of the day, I just need to look down here at the back of the garage, and if that light's on, then I know I left the air compressor on. So then I come back here and shut it off. And now that valve we were looking at earlier is uh, closing up again, saving all of that compressed air that we already paid to compress. Let me know what you think about this. I think that valve is, is pretty cool. I think everybody likes having their compressor in a separate room or building from their garage. If you've ever been standing next to an air compressor unsuspectingly and then the thing turns on by itself, it can really startle you. And, and, and I don't think that's any fun. Plus, just listening to one is uh, a pretty tiring. Um, I've got a sandblasting cabinet out here and it would run continuously and that's really obnoxious. Another cool thing I like about having the air stored in the compressor is sometimes I only need compressed air for just a few seconds uh, to blow out a, a threaded hole or uh, to blow the chips off of the uh, drill press table. And if I had to wait for the air compressor to completely charge, I probably wouldn't even bother. But I know all I have to do is push that button and boom, I have compressed air. I blow off whatever I need to do and then I turn it off again. And sometimes the compressor doesn't even come on. I just use compressed air that was in there. So other times I probably wouldn't even bother. So very cool. So uh, let me know what you think about that valve. I think it's pretty cool and I haven't seen anybody else using such a thing. It wasn't expensive. I was able to buy it off of Amazon. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get the, uh, the model number or part number, whatever it is, off of that thing in case anyone else is interested in adding that to their system. You can easily wire it in to uh, whatever kind of compressor you have so that when your compressor's on, just put it in with the same switch and uh, it'll, it'll save your compressed air and, and actually you listen to less compressor because you don't have to pump up from zero every time. Pretty neat addition. I wanted to share that with you. Um, uh, leave your comments, good or bad, whatever you think, uh, in the uh, comments. And uh, I'm curious to hear what you have to say about this. Thanks for watching. I'm just doing this for fun. And I want to share. I just want to give. That's it. Just give. No. No. Maybe. All right. On the mark with Mark. Thanks.